So when we had this lesson together, it was very confusing. Now, these vowel teams are confusing except for the double E. Those are super easy. Those are the easiest vowel teams. But this EW says the long U sound. And the long U sound is tricky because it's not allowed to be at the end of our language. So the long U sound is unique. It cannot be at the end of words. There are some exceptions, but it says different sounds like oo or eu, depending on what's in front of it. Now, look at this word. This says screw. Screw, and you hear the oo sound. S, k, er, oo. Screw. And if you fill your throat right here, er, and you say er, or j, or ch, 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 or n, ch, chew. This one's unusual. D, 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 oh. If you fit, if you do all of those sounds, they are vibrating sounds. And vibrating sounds typically will make the EW say ooh. Okay? So this one's unusual. Ch does not is not a vibrating sound, but it still says ooh right here. Now this says Jew, J, Ooh, Jew, Jew, Chew, Ch, Ooh. It almost says EU. So it would almost go over here. Chew. And I think I'm going to put that over there. That one's a really hard one to hear which one's. It's saying, this says, new, n, oo, new, do, d, oo, do, blue, b, u, oo, blue. And this has a homophone, and you will have the u sound where you're gonna have another vowel team that will say ooh at the end of a word, and you just need to study, you just need to study this vowel team right here so you understand which words say what with which vowel team. So, brew, b, er, ooh, brew, crew, k, er, ooh, crew, er, oo, through, th, er, oo, through. This is a multi-syllable word. Jewel, jew, ol, jew, ol, j, oo, and then this says ol. Sin, you, sin, you. I, n, and then you. New, n, u. This K N is a digraph that says n. Grew, g, er, u, g, er, u, grew. Flew, f, o, u, flew. Now remember those. Vibrating sounds. Oh, er, n. It's going to force the EW, the long U sound, to say ooh. Now, the EW also says EU, like few, few. EU. It's saying two sounds, and it's because it's a soft sound. Go. Those are all soft sounds. Look at this one. Pew. P e u. It forces that e u sound. Cur few. Ch chew. Chew. Now this one right here 
is unusual. And it says, oh, but if you are struggling to figure these out, you go with the U or the EU sounds first before you try to figure out something like this. So do these first and then go to O if you're trying to figure out a word. So this says so and sown. Now so right here is your simple tense verb and sown is your past participle which is your perfect tense verb. So they belong together. Now right here, this is super interesting. Now a long time ago, the French took over the English and they forced the English to speak French. And especially in their parliament, their government, um, went into their food section. So that's how the English ended up with so many French words in our language. So we, and it happened clear, I mean, hundreds of years ago. And so now we have French words in our language. And O-U-R is part of a French word. So when you see O-U-R, you know that it's going to come from the French language, but it is in our English we are adopted it in. Now, right here, when you see this, we Americans have changed ours a little bit. Now the British English is still O-U-R, but the American English at the end of a word, we have, we've taken out the U in some of our words. And this only happens at the end of our language. So this says labor, lay, Burr. See, O U R will say er at the end of a word like this. Labor. But see the difference? Labor and labor. Honor and honor. Color and color. Armor and armor. Savior and savior. So American English, British English. So O-U-R, it says our as one of the sounds. So O-U-R all by itself is its very own word. It's a possessive pronoun. It's an adjective like our house. And that gets confused with the word R. This right here is a verb. Our is a pronoun. This is a possessive pronoun, a determiner. So, but a lot of people say R for our, and you shouldn't do that. You need to say our for our, our house, not our house. So make sure you don't get these two words mixed up. So we have our as its very own word, Sour, s, hour, hour. Now the H is silent here. This is a time, one hour. Flower, s, l, hour, flower. Now O U R can also say or, tour, t, or, t, or, tour, your, y, or, your. For, or, for, poor, p, or, poor, court, k, or, t, court, course, k, or, s, k, or, s. Now look, this ends with an S-E. It only has three sounds, but one, two, three, four, five, six, letters, but only three sounds. And most of the time, if you're going to hear us at the end, it's going to end with a C E, but in this one, it's an S E. So be very careful with that. Most of the time S E's at the end of a word say Z, but not in this word. Resource, resource, re, er, e, and then source. S 
or s. So you have five sounds in here, but you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters and five sounds. So remember, this can say or. Now, O-U-R can also say er, like the word journey. J er knee. Jur knee. Journey. Okay, so this is also a vowel team that we will hit up at another time. Nur ish. Nur ish. N er and then ish. Ish. Nourish. Adjourn. This D is silent. And this is a prefix. A journ. A j er n journ. Now courage. Cur idge. Cur idge. Remember, we have a lesson out there that talks about the A G E says idge at the end of a multisyllable word. Okay? So er and then idge. Three sounds. And you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. Courage. Now the vowel team E E is the easiest vowel team out there. Because no matter what, the double E is going to say E. No matter if it's at the beginning of the word, in the middle of a word, or at the end of a word, it's going to say E. So these ones are super easy to read if you have your other letters down. So S E C C B B B E B F E F Tree T Er E Tree Peel And these are these ones are a little bit harder to hear when you have the P's in front of them. Um, and I would probably say that's because it has a soft sound. It almost wants to say the A, but it's P, P, peel, peel, P, P, E, O, peel, flee, F, O, E, need, N, E, D, need, seam, S, E, M, seam. Feel, f e o feel. Weak, w e k weak. Keep, k e p keep. These are all real words that we use all of the time in the English language. Feet, f e t feet. Right there. <laughs> Seed, s e d seed, weed, w e d weed, beef, b e f beef, teen, t e n teen, the th e the weep, w e p weep. Seam, e m seam. Multisyllable word, knee, needle, n e, and then do, d o, needle. Shear, sh e er, shear, peer, p e er, peer. Pioneer. This is a big multi-syllable word. It's going to break. Look, this is not a vowel team. It breaks here. Pi. This makes this long because it's an open syllable. Pi. Open syllable. O. Long. Pi. O. And then you have near. It's going to say the long E sound because it's a double E. Pi. O. Near. Look. Open syllable, long I. Open syllable, long O. Double E's say the long E sound. Pi, O, 
near. That's how you would read that word. Pioneer. Pioneer. Cheer. Ch e er. Cheer. Sneer. S n e er. Sneer. Veneer. It's a multi-syllable word, so it's going to say ven ear. V e n and then e er. And then deer. D e er. We have a lot of deer that get in our yard and eat all of our plants, but they are beautiful. The vowel team E, I, and I, E. These are such confusing vowel teams and many English speaking people get them mixed up. These ones are words that you really need to study and actually memorize. There are a few tricks. I before E except after C. So that means you are spelling words in the middle you're spelling the vowel team E-I or I-E in the middle of a word. If it's I before E, you spell it I before E unless it's after the C. But then you have weirdo words that do not follow that rule. So um, see how this one, I before E, this is not a C. I before E except after C. See, these are not C's. So these, this follows the rule. I, I before E unless it's after a C. And then you spell it E-I. So that's one of the tricks, but then, then you have weirdo words that are going to trip you up and, it's, and you just need to memorize how they go. And personally, I would get a bunch of words that say this sound because you're gonna have EI that's going to say different sounds. Um, let's go into this one. This says E, weird, weird, weird. If I say it fast, it's gonna say weird. So, but it's saying w E, er, d, weird. And this one says either, E, th, er. E, th, er. Three sounds, but you have six letters. E, th, er. Either. So then I would just put the any of the words that have a long E sound with and, and study them. But you can also follow the rule. I before E except after C. And they they follow a lot of the rules. So this says receive. Re -s E -v. Now remember, you cannot have the letter V at the end of a word. You have to have VE if you want to end it. V's aren't allowed at the end of words. The same as U's, the same as I's, they're not allowed. There's a few exceptions, but they're not allowed. Receipt. Now the P is silent in here. And see, look, E, I, and it's a C right here. So that's following the rule. Re, er, e, and then seat, s, e, t, receipt, and then p silent. This is a true sight word. You have to learn the spelling on this. You can't just spell it out. It doesn't work. E, i also says a, like the word there, th, a, er, th, a, er, a. And you would almost hear air in this one. Air, and also hear E-I says A, so when, you, when it's following an R, it's going to say A-er. So it's still saying the A sound, but it's going to say sound like air. Now this one, vein, v-a-n, v-a-n, vein, vein, veil, v-a-o, veil, rain, er, a -n. Now this is a homophone, and this is a homophone, and so just be careful. This is not the rain that falls. This is the raining in your horse. These are vowel teams in here. Then you're also going to have words like deity. This is not a vowel team. So if you're trying to figure out the word because you don't know English very well, you can first start it out and say, okay, I'm going to try E, 
and see if that works. And then try A. But then if it's not working, you can break the word apart. So you have your two vowels right here and you're gonna just break them right down the middle. This becomes an open syllable and this breaks right here, but because it's an I in the middle of a word, it's going to say it's short sound. That is a reading and a spelling rule. So this, because it's an open E, that means that it's an open syllable, it's forcing the E to say it's long E sound and it's saying D, I, T. Why is at the end, I would say most of the time, say E. Not always, because sometimes they say I. Deity. So be really careful. It is not a vowel team like these are. They break apart and they can be difficult to read when you're learning English. So if you always just see an EI, doesn't mean it's always a vowel team. You're gonna find lots of words like this. Um, you have therein, that's just like this, and just break it apart. And this one is the vowel team. But look at this one. This says re-import. Look, this is not a vowel team. This is part of a prefix, this is part of a prefix, and this is your Latin root. So prefix, prefix, Latin root. If you see them, like that, if you study your Latin roots and your Latin prefixes, you can pull this out and then you're gonna know that that is not a vowel team. And so you can grab that. Now, O, this is not a vowel team either. It says O, B, D, ENTS. So see how it can be really confusing. O, B, D, ENTS. And this word comes from the word obey. And this right here is a vowel team, um, but it's changed up to put it in obedience. So be careful. This I is saying E because it's followed by a vowel. And that is a reading and a spelling rule when you hear it. But know that it can change. So that actually falls into the IE section. Now let's go over to the vowel team IE. And it says E, same thing right here, it says E. But look what it does in really small words. It says I. And this happens in these really teeny tiny words that says lie. Like ol I, d I, die. Lie, die, tie, t I, tie, pie, p I, pi. So that's what happens. That's how you spell I in these small words. And these need to actually be studied because you're going to, how you spell I at the end of a word oftentimes is with a Y when they're really small like this. And so you need to be careful to study these, the difference of these. Now, this is also um, a sound and it says field, I, f, I, old, field. So, but most of the time, you're in the middle of a word, you're going to get the I, E to say E. Tear, E, see that? T, E, er, tear, peer, p, E, er, peer. Thief, you can hear the E in here so much better than the R. E, thief, chief, ch, E, chief, niece, N, E, s, niece. Now remember what we talked about, C, E's at the end of a word will say S, and I have a whole video out there about the CEs that might help you. CE says SE most of the time says Z. So niece, N E S, niece. So you can't spell niece like this. N 
I E S because S at the end of a word means plural. This is, you can't do that. If you want S at the end of a word and you put S, it's completely wrong because that is a plural suffix. And so if you want S at the end of a word, you have to do something like this. All right? Brief. B -er -e -f. Brief. Grief, g er e f. Val team I E says E. B leave, B leave, B E, and then leave. O E V. Now remember, these cannot sit at the end of the English language. They have to have another letter here. So if it's at the very end, it's going to be a V E. This is where it's really confusing. Now you're going to have the IEs that will not be the vowel team. So look at this word, view, view, v, v, u, v, u, v, u. So it splits right here, v, u, v, u. And so you need to be careful with this. And this is saying the E sound. And oftentimes, the I, if it's the very first syllable, doesn't move to E, but it is in this syllable. So this is not saying, this is not the vowel team. Preview, same thing as here. But look at this word. This says liar, liar. This breaks, and it's saying it's a long sound because it's the very first syllable and it's an open I. If it's the very first syllable and it's an open I, it's gonna say it's long sound most of the time. See, this is unusual. This says V because the other rule is, is if the I is followed by a vowel, it's going to say the E sound, but not as much as, as if it's the very first syllable. So it says lie-er. E-R says er in the English language. Liar. Now, the same thing with this one. Diet. This is going to say it's long sound and this is a short sound. This is an open syllable, closed syllable. Die and then et. That's why the first five lessons, I really wanted you to make sure that you can get your short sounds down. It's so important because guess what? This is a short E sound. It's saying et because it's a closed syllable. Every one of those words in those lessons are closed syllables. It forces the short sound. Diet. Same thing here. Quiet. Quiet. So if it is the first syllable, most of the time it's going to say I, and then look, closed syllable. Open syllable, close syllable, open syllable, close syllable. And then obedience. This one, since it's in the middle of a word, it's saying it's following the vowel rule. Where if the vowel is followed, if the I is followed by a vowel, it's going to say E. But see how this one is not doing that because it's the very beginning of the word, the very first syllable. So see how this one right here is not a vowel team. It's saying O, B, D, N. So, but look at this word. This word, look at that. If you see a C, I, C, I, T, I, S, I, followed by a vowel, most likely, it is not going to be a vowel team. Most likely, it's not going to be the vowel team, i.e., that says e. This is going to say shh. It is the digraph. And this is so confusing. This is the digraph, two letters that make one sound, ain, ancient, ancient. And this isn't saying the sound that you would expect to say, but this is shent. This is not a vowel team. This right here is a digraph. So these don't go together.
So that can be really confusing. So be careful with your words. Good luck with that. Go in and help you understand the prefixes and suffixes because it's so important for you to actually have your prefixes and your suffixes, your prefixes and your suffixes memorized. So if you see the prefix a or an, that means it's coming at the beginning of the word. That means before. Pre means before. And so that means that that has a meaning of without. But if you have the suffix an at the end of a word, it's going to mean a person. So that's really what I want you to focus on right here. So let's look at the word America. America. Now, now we are putting on the suffix an right here, and it's going to say American. So this is somebody that belongs to America. Okay? Texas. Texan. See how the A-N, somebody that belongs to Texas, that lives in Texas. I'm a Texan. Okay? Politic. Politician. An A-N. That means this is a person that works in politics. Italy. Italian. This is a person that belongs to Italy. They live in Italy. They call that their home. I, I am an American. I call America my home. So, but these are all a little bit different. See how this ends in A? You could just add on the N. And you, but it still means a person, American. But look, this is a little bit different. So sometimes you have to change things up a little bit to add on your suffix. Sometimes it just doesn't go on. You just have to manipulate it to go on. So, cause you can hear it, tex un, you don't say texasin. You wouldn't just do this. You wouldn't say texasin. So, um, so you would just drop the S and put your N on. So things change a little bit, but oftentimes when you see a C that ends at the word and you're adding on your suffix like this, this right here is going to change into the diagraph CI. And if you put the diagraph CI on there with the suffix an with the suffix an it's going to mean somebody's job they're a politician it's their job this ci typically says this is my job and this is the person that works in politics now italy this one's different is what you're going to do is you're going to do the regular suffix. You're going to change the Y to an I and just add your suffix on. So that one just completely follows the spelling rule. This one, this one was the easiest one. I tell e un. Italian. And then it just sounds different. Italy, Italian. Now also another suffix that I wanted to talk to you about that we went over is the suffix al. It's going to be in lots and lots and lots of words and the suffix al slightly changes the meaning of the word. Al means you're relating to, relating to something. So let's look at the word music and we're going to add on your suffix al. And this means musical. It means this says music, this says musical. Mu sic. Mu, this long U sound, and then it's saying sic. How do we spell ick at the end of a multisyllable word? If I say sic, that's how we're going to spell it if it's a one syllable word. But if I want sick at the end of a multi syllable word, or ick actually, really, at the end of a multi syllable word, you're going to spell this sick S I C. Super tricky. That's a spelling rule that you need to learn. This is a one syllable word. This is how you spell 
ick at the end of a one syllable word. This is how you spell ick or sick at, in a multi syllable word. See, this is a multi syllable word, and so this is what the difference is sick and sick. But this sick goes on something like this, and this is its very own word. So, music, music, M music, musical. It means it's relating to music. That's what this means. This AL means this is relating to music. Roy, Roy Ol. Roy means king. It is French. And this means royal means it's relating to the king. He's royal. Try, try -ol. This means it's relating to trying, to try. You'll have a lot of words out there that aren't just suffixes like this. You're going to have words that are just part of the words that is an AL. And that's just what it is. And you just need to know which ones are the suffixes and which ones are not. The, the ones that are not suffixes are much harder to spell because you can have I, L, E, L, U, L, O, L, and obviously A, L. A, L is the most common. If you're going to have to guess how to spell a word, use A, L. Um, if you can, always look up your word if you don't know how to spell it. If you have to guess, guess an A-L. Pedal. This is a multi-syllable word. ped o p e d o And then you hear o and it's A-L. to to It's long. Total. T-O. T-O. Vocal. It's long. Vo, v, o, cool. K, o, cool. Legal. See how it breaks. So, this is how you would break a multi syllable word most of the time. It doesn't always follow the rule, just like this one didn't follow. But look, if you have a vowel here and a vowel here, and you only have one consonant in the middle between those, you're going to take this consonant and move it to the end. Move it over here. And then that forces this to be long because it's an open syllable, and then this is a closed syllable, and it says legal, legal. That's how you do it most of the time. And then if it doesn't make a real word, that you're wondering about, which is much harder, obviously, if you can't speak English. Like this word, pedal. See how this one actually is saying it's short sound. It needed to be forced over here. But look how many aren't like that. Total, vocal, these are all long sounds. Final, final, see it's, there's the two in the middle right here. My pen's not working very well. There's the vowels and there's only one in the middle. Bring it to the end over here. It's final and it's open. It's I, it's saying it's long I sound, fi no. So you will have ALs that are sitting in its very own word and, and then you'll have them obviously as suffixes which mean relating to. All right, we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye everybody.